Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Shooting Sports. I've teased this a couple of times in some YouTube short videos, but it's finally time to do a full-length video on this. This is my Ruger 57. Uh, in particular, this is my Ruger MP57, and it is a combination of off-the-shelf parts, some parts that I have designed, some parts that others have designed, and is still very much a work in progress, but it's too cool not to show in its current state. At the core of all of this is a Ruger 57 pistol, and the Ruger 57 pistol is chambered in 57 by 28 um, you know, same round that the FN57 shoots, the same round that the uh, P90 shoots, but a little bit more little bit more budget oriented uh, compared to the Ruger, or excuse me, compared to the FN57 pistol. Um, I purchased it out the door for like 500 bucks for the base pistol. The prices fluctuate, uh, but that's sort of like a normal price of what it should cost. Now, this obviously doesn't look like a normal Ruger 57, and that's because it is fitted in a the MP57 chassis, if you will, uh, formerly from Custom Smith Manufacturing. They sold these for a couple of years. They have since discontinued it. However, they have either licensed or sold. I don't get into the business aspects of it, uh, but a new manufacturer is going to be taking over production of these units of the uh, the chassis, the body kit for them, if you will. Why this setup makes sense is because the Ruger 57 uses a serialized fire control group, similar to like the SIG 320, the SIG uh, P250. Um, the only part that is technically and legally a firearm is this little kind of metal component, the serial number there, this little metal component inside that holds your your trigger setup, your safety, your locking block, your rails for your slide, everything else. So it means you can have something completely different that you put the slide, the barrel, and that fire control group into. Now, uh, this chassis itself by Custom Smith Manufacturing is a printed part. It's not like, it doesn't appear to be standard, like FDM printed. Um, it's not like printed on an Ender 3 using PLA+. Plus. Uh, I believe it is using um, the centered laser setup. Uh, the material has kind of an interesting texture to it. The layer lines are really non-existent. You can see kind of the print direction, but it's not like a defined line. It has a nice grippy texture to it. It seems very solid, and I'm not concerned about the durability of that at all. It'll be interesting to see what the new manufacturer does as far as utilizing the design, whether they also go printed or whether they go injection molded or something else. That gets me to the base of this here. So basically every part that's gray is from Custom Smith Manufacturing. You have a Picatinny rail at the rear and a Picatinny rail on top, which is helpful for adding something like some uh, longer sight radius iron sights and a red dot sight in this case. Um, this actually partially co-witnesses, which is kind of a nice setup. The iron sights on this, I had a bunch of people in the shorts asking like, where'd you get those iron sights? These are just super, super cheap airsoft iron sights. The rear is adjustable for windage and elevation. The front's a fiber optic tube. They are nothing special. They are super inexpensive. I think they came off of like a $50 airsoft gun from ASG, but they work. They fit the look of this quite well, and I really like it. Now, What's inside this is a normal FN57 slide and barrel. How would you manipulate that? On the side, you will have a charging handle. It is attached to the optic mount screw holes that are on top of the slide for the, F, uh, the Ruger 57 anyways. And it is a reciprocating charging handle. So whenever you shoot, it does move back um, you used to be able to get this in left-handed or right-handed, but literally I bought, I'm pretty sure the only one of these kits that Custom Smith Manufacturing still had sitting around the shop. Uh, so I didn't exactly get to pick and choose. Uh, I would have probably have liked to have gone with the right charging model, um, mainly because that way you can utilize it as like a cheat pistol as well. Uh, you can't exactly cheat pistol this guy because a charging handle will do some dollar per round dental work on you. 
What I did want to do is I did want to utilize some sort of PDW style brace. Starting with the Digital Nimbus Invader uh, Glock style frame, uh, I remixed it heavily. Basically cut off the entire uh, brace section of that frame and reconfigured it to be Picatinny mounted. Uh, part of that also included making it wider both in the brace itself and in the brace mount to properly fit on the wider chassis here. Um, it uses a digital Nimbus rail kit and spring kit and other hardware kit. However, it had to be modified. The reason it needed to be modified is the brace arms were way too long. They basically went up to here. They were like two or three inches longer. And when used, it would give you like a 15 and a half inch length of pull, which is legally problematic for a pistol brace. Now, it does deploy uh, automatically, and it is very fun to do. I will never get tired of doing that. When you give it a good slap, it locks in place properly. It is very solid on there. This is designed to give you a good cheek weld, um, but I still am playing with the geometry. This is all very beta. Um, there are, this is not final designs on anything. Um, but this, I'm just gonna give it just a little bit more of a fillet there on the edge, just to make for a little bit more comfortable cheek weld. If you do find yourself pressing this against your cheek, it does work quite well for that. Um, the offset design of this and this flat ridge here does make this good for bracing against your forearm for one-handed aiming. Uh, this is a brace that is designed to actually work like a brace, which is one of those things that the ATF looks out for in brace design. It is spring ejected, if you will, using all that normal digital Nimbus hardware. Feeding this, the Ruger 57 normally has a 20 round magazine. Um, I'm working with a gentleman on Reddit, uh, Yippie Kaye. He has designed some printable extensions. He's designed a five round extension, which we have here. Um, and he's also working on a 10 round extension. Now, these are also very early, very prototype designs. This doesn't have the retaining screw in it that it needs um, to keep from coming off. And it's I had to kind of hammered in place there. The fitment is very tight. Um, but I'm you know hopefully gonna be working with him on kind of tweaking the design just a little bit, tweaking the ergonomics just a little bit. Um, so this version, as I said, is the five round version. So this is 25 rounds on board, um, but there's a 10 round version that we might be working on together a little bit. It might need a little bit of a curve to it just because the five, seven round does like to curve in longer uh, you know, magazine extensions. Um, some of the other things that people asked we're about manipulating the safety. Manipulating the safety is just fine. Manipulating the safety with the brace collapsed is a little bit tighter, but certainly still able to be done. But really, you want to be running this with the brace extended because it's super, super cool. What's the point of this build? Why do you want to take a 57 by 28 handgun, traditional format handgun, and transform it into a large format pistol build. This is still a pistol build, this is a pistol brace. But why would you want to turn it into a large format pistol? Well, for one thing, I like having a non-reciprocated optic mounted. Uh, slide mounted optics are a very good thing. They're great for competition shooting, they're great for carry concealed shooting, but they do require a lot of training to use effectively because you're having to you know, every time the slide kicks back, you're then having to reset your full sight picture and find that dot in the sight. So much so that certain red dot manufacturers have designed red dots with like a big halo around it to help you locate it if you're off axis to be like, oh, I need to bring it in. Oh, I need to bring it in that way. Having it mounted on a stationary component on the top of the gun that isn't gonna recoil or isn't gonna you know move with the slide movement uh, is really helpful in keeping that good sight picture. I like having long uh, sight radius iron sights, which is something that you can't do. The sight radius on this is like three inches longer than on just the normal slide. 
I like having more accessory mounting points. Um, and I'm working on this design to add some additional accessory mounting points if so desired. And we could probably get some side rails on here. Um, and of course, I always love third point stabilization of something like a pistol brace. Adding that third point of stabilization is just fantastic. It makes much, much smoother shooting, much uh, more precise and quick shooting than just, you know, two-handing handgun. Having that third point of contact is really, really beneficial. Future plans for this. Uh, one, getting it out to the range and getting some video for you guys. I have put some rounds through it, uh, just sort of as testing. However, we didn't get any video footage of that yet. Um, I wasn't able to get to my private range like I normally like to do my video at, uh, but I do intend to do that uh, at a dollar per round. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be shooting a ton of rounds through this, uh, but you better believe that pretty much every round I throw through this is going to have video footage of it because it is so expensive to shoot. Um, eventually, I would like to have this whole concept be printable. This is a patent pending uh, chassis setup, and I, I actually do believe in like respecting existing patents, especially of small manufacturers. Custom Smith manufacturing is just like a guy. He's a guy that comes up with some really cool stuff, um, and I don't want to infringe on his existing patent in any way. But I do want to try to design something that would allow you to mount a brace and mount an optic uh, with that drop-in Ruger 57 fire control group. Um, I have to explore his patent a little bit just to see wh what I can do to design that without infringing on it. Because like I said, I respect the guy a lot um, and I don't want to infringe on his patent. So I want to see what options we have to do something like this that is home printable. I want to continue a little bit of development on the Digital Nimbus uh, Remix PW brace set up here. I really, really like how it is. It just needs a couple of just small tweaks just to be really, really comfortable when shooting. Um, the cheek weld that you currently get is good, but like I said, it is a little bit not as rounded as you might like, depending on your shooting style. And like I said, I wanna to continue to develop uh, some magazine extensions for this. But overall, I really, really like this thing. It's just a super, super cool setup. Um, it is a little bit pricey. This setup as pictured, I'm in this about $800, uh, which is expensive, actually more if you count the optic, but I never count optics because frankly, I tend to throw optics around on whatever I'm shooting at that day um, and the brace hardware kit. So I'm in this more than $800. It's a little pricey. The gun was about five and the Custom Smith Manufacturing MP57 kit was $300 for me. It's actually more expensive uh, retail. I don't know what the new manufacturer's pricing is gonna be like, but we shall see. Uh, but overall, it's it's a very cool setup. It's sort of, you know, mom, I want an MP7. Well, we have MP7 at home, and this is the MP7 at home. It fires a different round, um, but it's still just in that same type of format, and it's just very, very cool. Uh, again, in the future, I would like to add a threaded barrel to this. However, the threaded barrels for these are like between $250 and $300. Um, that's kind of ridiculous. I'm hoping some other manufacturers can come in and it's a very simple barrel. It's a very simple lockup setup. I'm hoping another manufacturer can come in and maybe get a less expensive version because uh, I also don't see a way that I can have this threaded myself like I normally do but we'll see. But this with a little bit extended threaded barrel, I have a suppressor that works for 5.7 by 28, but this suppressed would just be oh, just such a, such a cool setup. So yeah, overall, like I said, that's sort of my overview on this MP57 project to date, kind of everything that's going on with it so far, some future plans, and uh, some ways that you will be able to hopefully build this yourself in the near future. Of course, my brace files and everything, these will work with other things. It's just a matter of whether it fits on the chassis or not. These will of course be released on all of my normal channels once I get it done and tested. Um, and you know, you'll be able to have this brace on your whatever rear Picatinny mount, large format pistol you want. Um, but yeah, thanks for your guys' support. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more interesting things on this build.